Hi guys, um, I know you, most of you. After a long week of studying or working, you probably decide to lay on the couch. You curl up under a blanket because you're tired, but then after like a minute or 10, you get bored. So you start scrolling on Instagram and you see all your friends attending parties. And you're like, what am I doing here? I'm missing out on all the fun you start feeling uneasy. And then, the other day, you stare at your colleague, because he has the newest smartphone with all kinds of features you don't need but still want. <laughs> so again, you get uneasy, and you start acting compulsively and uncontrollable. So you start Googling, and you start trying to find a way to get that phone, because you think you need it. And maybe you see where I'm going here. I'm talking about FOMO. Fear of missing out on great opportunities, experiences. And it's very normal, we've all been there, you probably have been there, I've been there. And we're in great company. Because CEOs of major global organizations are experiencing this too. But the thing is, they're not experiencing it when they miss out on a party or when they don't have the new phone. But when new technology comes out, like blockchain or artificial intelligence or quantum computing, they start feeling uneasy. Because they're afraid they're going to miss out on what this technology might bring to their business. And, you know, we can't blame them. Technology over time has shown us that, you know, it's, ha it's super handy. We have made our lives more efficient, we were able to scale, to automate. Basically, everything got better. So, yeah, um, I really get those CEOs or those leaders but I also think they're missing out on something important. Let me give you an example. So when I was working for one of those tech firms, I used to work with different types of clients, but one of the clients was a financial firm. And then when blockchain came out, they were like, Ooh, this might disrupt the world as we know it, and it might really impact everything we do, so we need to act fast. So they started acting compulsively. But what they did in practice is that they actually just appointed a huge amount of money. Then they saw a person and they were like, you're this new innovation blockchain guy for us and you just need to sort this out. And I saw this happening time over time and I saw a, a pattern emerge and I was really wondering if this really is the way to look at new technology. Because in the end, a lot of money was wasted, but also the employees felt lost at sea because they had no clue what the actual benefits of the technology were. And that's such a shame, because I love tech, I love blockchain, and it's, it's very amazing, but we need to use it in the right way. As you can maybe imagine, is that when a student like this is acting compulsively, the impact on you know, the world around us and on society is less big than when a CEO does the same. And therefore, today, I would like to do two things with you. I would like to discuss and show you what might happen if leaders keep having this perspective on new tech. And then I, of course, also will share with you how we, as future leaders, can overcome this. So imagine you're a CEO. You're working around the clock. You're so busy. You have all those targets and people, and you know, you have no time. But then, you just hire a consultant. So me, for example, I walk in and I just start telling you everything you need to know about the next big technical innovation. The metaverse. Some might have heard of it, some maybe haven't. And there's not one definition yet, but what it basically means is that our lives, the physical and virtual lives, will continue to merge and more and more. So where we're currently glued to our phones, we will probably be glued to our goggles soon. And underneath the metaverse, there is blockchain, there is yeah, sorry, augmented reality, virtual reality, all types of technologies. But we won't notice that. And companies are getting handy here because, you know, they're trying to get in our attention span. 
So what happens is where you think that these goggles are for gamers, that's not the case. It's for everyone. And where you maybe now actually, you know, enjoy drinking a beer in a bar, big beer bands are already launching new beers made of the freshest pixels instead of hops. It's already happening. You can also drink your sodas, you can also wear all your brands. Because companies are now getting interested in finding a way to direct us and get into our focus. So this might be where we are headed. So envision yourself walking through the streets, having your own avatar, and just, you know, having everything you need, but then virtually. And I wouldn't be a consultant if I wouldn't share any data with you. So what's also really important to notice is that in 2020, there were about 60 million users in the metaverse, but it's projected to become 2.2 trillion in a few years. And the market size, the projections, they're awesome. I mean, over a trillion dollars in a few years, and Gartner is also predicting that about a quarter of all people globally spend at least one hour a day in the metaverse. You're a CEO, remember? So when you hear about all these projections and the market sizing, you're getting excited because you think about these growth lines and you're like, ooh, new profit pools I can untap? That's awesome. So you, yeah, the FOMO kicks in. You're there, you're, you really start fearing of missing out. You're afraid to miss out on this boat. And this FOMO, it's real. I've seen it happen so many times and I'm super shocked because I'm like, is that the only thing that matters? The growth, the projections? What is the impact of all this immersive tech on our lives? So I started envisioning, what would the world look like for my daughter if I ever have one? I mean, <laughs> would she grow up like this? Would she? come out of me and then there would already be an avatar? <laughs> Will this really happen? And would that mean that I would create a perfect life for her? Because she can, you know, have all her friends and <laughs> she is wearing all the clothes and stuff, whatever she wants, whatever she needs? Or does it mean she will never ever fall out of a tree and never run into an accident and actually miss out on very important experiences? Maybe she will play outside like this, and that's it. <laughs> and I started wondering if leaders only focus on, you know, the efficiency and the growth and the profits, this might really happen. And this is terrible, to my opinion. Because already today, kids are spending twice as much time online as they're spending uh, outside. And over time, and research has been proving this more and more so, it's up impacting our ability to sleep, our ability to focus. And considering the complex world we're living in, we need our human skills and our creativity to actually make the right decisions. So we need to be conscious about this and really wonder if this is how we want our kids to grow, grow up. As you maybe get, this is not what I think is the best. So <clears throat> I started thinking like, what can we do? How can we as future leaders intervene? And I think it's not that difficult. We just need to change our perspectives from FOMO 1.0, what we have been discussing, to FOMO 2.0. That's it. And what I will be sharing with you guys here today is a brand new idea. And I'm so ready to walk it through with you guys and see how we, we can work together on this journey and to see how we together can create a future where we all want to live in. So, form your own opinion, organize conflict, merge the new insights, and then orchestrate. Step one, it all starts with forming your own opinion. So what's really important here is that you actually dare to take time Consider yourself a leader, and this can be of a huge organization or a smaller team or department, but it's important to step outside of your cookie world, outside of your ivory tower, and actually think about how is this technology or the tech, 
techno sorry, technological innovation like the metaverse, how is it impacting the world around me? So, of course, company value is important, but personal value and well-being and societal value and well-being is also very important. If you want more info on this model, I'm referring you to Kees Klomp. And then, after you have taken some time to form your own opinion, it's all about organizing conflict. Maybe this sounds a bit controversial, but it's, it's necessary. Because due to the cookies, but also due to, you know, the tunnels and the bubbles we're living in, it's important to look beyond those perspectives. So find people within your organization, probably between five to eight, and look for people that are thinking different from you. So if you're working somewhere and you think you have this very annoying vegan colleague, he might be super helpful because he can probably tell you that the metaverse is using a lot of energy and that it will not help in your CO2 emissions. Or you have this other person working maybe in your HR department, listen to her too, because she might tell you that no one enjoys having drinks in the metaverse because they actually want real connection. They want to feel the vibe and the energy. But maybe you think, well, it's so efficient. So I, I, I'm going to do it anyway, but listen to them. And also I've seen in my research that when you actually provide room for them and if you listen to your employees, that they feel more safe and more trusted and they will share even more innovation with you. Super handy. And then step number three, merging the insights. So as a leader, you probably got some insights from the vegan guy and the HR woman. <laughs> and you need to do something with that or at least if you really want to make a difference. So you start seeing, okay, how can I actually use this new knowledge, which is power, but then also my position as a leader, which is also powerful, and how can I take that as a responsible next step within my organization? And then a step four, it's orchestration. And actually, I just mean acting. So it's super important, of course, after you gathered all these new insights, that you do something with it. And then I really mean sharing, because what I've seen also in my study is that in 50% of the cases, new leadership has new perspectives on new tech, but they don't know how to share it. And then the people working for you or with you don't really know that you're not that old school anymore. So they're missing out on your new perspective. So that's super, super important. And then finally, you actually start orchestrating. And what I mean by that is that an the uh, sorry, director of an orchestra has the sketch. But you need to make sure, of course, that it runs smoothly. And also, again, depending on your organization or your team size, you make sure to have someone that can do this with you or you find people to help you out here. That's it. <clears throat> it's all about forming your own opinion, so dare to take that time. Organize conflict. Might feel iffy, but it will work. Then you actually merge the insights, and then lastly, you orchestrate. And let me say one thing. This is not a message of depression. I mean, we don't have to be victims of technology. Tech will always be a means to an end, and we should not forget that. So for tonight, I'm just considering all of you attending as seeds that are planted, and we can make this better together. We can be the responsible leaders the world needs, and we can make sure that we design a world where we want ourselves, but also our kids to grow up into. So instead of acting from fear, FOMO 1.0, we need to make FOMO serve us, FOMO 2.0. Thank you.